a lot of the, the conversations have been around influencers. And we know that media is very important, but there are new influencers too, whether it's the, the bloggers, YouTubers, it could be your customers, your employees, your partners. And when it comes to those influencers, brands definitely want to attract them and, and engage and build relationships. But what can a brand do? What qualities does a brand need to sort of stand out and what looks attractive to the influencers? I think one of the things that brands need to do is make sure they have the right fit with the influencer and make sure that the influencer is aware of and likes and is comfortable with the brand and that what the brand stands for fits with what the influencer stands for. And then I think the brands need, need to be authentic. They need to be authentic, they need to be transparent, and they need to have a personality. So what are they on social media? Are they fun, funny, are they sarcastic, are they informative? And again, how does that tie in with what the influencer wants? Because it really, it's all about people. And I think PR people forgot because we treated media as a separate audience and didn't think about them as people. Right. And I think if we would have thought of them as people, we probably wouldn't have used as much corporate speak over the years. And social media is, has changed that for the better. Oh, definitely. And you're right. At the end of the day, we're all people and we have like-minded issues that we want to rally around. So as we're building these wonderful relationships, how do you think organizations should be benchmarking the progress and really showing, especially on the PR side, the business value? That's a great question. And I think with digital media, we now have the means at our hands to track behavior and to see whether or not our efforts lead to an outcome. But that starts at the beginning. You can't just say, okay, you know, we're gonna find some influencers and get them to write about us and be excited about us and we give them a link to our website and expect them to go because you know we haven't thought about how we are tracking the traffic. We need to go back and create that link at the beginning. Make sure that each influencer has you know a unique uh, campaign URL to share and so we can track uh, the, we can track the engagement that the influencer brings to the channel. I think that's really, really important. So there is a direct measure. We get an article that we got our clients in the media, and that's still really great. Yes. And But there's often not, at least from the print edition, there's not a direct link. There is possibly from the online edition, but again, you have to provide that journalist with that right. trackable URL at the beginning and say, can you please use this URL if you're mentioning our organization or the initiative or the product or whatever it is. So I think that's one thing. I think the second thing is a softer metric. The softer metric is really a relationship metric mm -hmm. that ties in with the fact that if you build trust with people, if you get into trouble, if there's an issue or a crisis, you know that they at least will be open to listening to your side of right. the story and possibly even defending you, but at least open to listening because that sometimes can be the difference between changing the conversation and just being pummeled online. Absolutely, and when it comes to online, having those champions in place and taking the time yeah. to build those relationships, because you're right, when something happens, you have goodwill stored up in the trust bank, and yeah. that's exactly what you need because they will listen and, and give you a chance to tell your side of the story. Yeah, and you know, I think people forget, social media is fast, relationships yeah. still take time. They really <laughs> do. Real you know, relationship, thank you. You know, it's not the kind of thing you get, you can say to an influencer or a media person, hey, here we are, cover this, do this for me, because you haven't built up any social capital, you haven't done anything to make you seem trustworthy, and you also haven't, you know, started by giving that influencer something. Because reciprocity is so important to a relationship. Oh, give and take, definitely. So on the note of social media, and let's pivot inward into yep. the organization. We were struggling years ago, and maybe some companies still are, I hope not, but it was that question, who owns social media? Well, we figured that out. Let's move to, and this is your question, What is who, who owns the future of relationship building? 
You know, I think, well, first of all, who on social media? It's funny because there was a story in Ad Age last week. Oh, see that we're still talking about talking it. Talking about who owns social media. And the person went through digital agencies, media companies, SEO, ad agencies, and concluded that PR. <laughs> really, I know it's self-serving to say that. But that's what he said, that PR is the best to manage it if they get um, better, if they put together teams who have multimedia storytelling sure. capabilities. And that, that's something that, you know, we have been writers for far too long. We need to expand into becoming visual storytellers. But as far as relationships, I think everybody used to guard their relationships so much. You know, if you were a PR agency, it's <laughs> you trade, those are my relationships. You my know. contacts, don't touch them. I think now all the relationships need to be shared among everyone in the organization. And everyone really should be considered a relationship builder. I think maybe PR agencies shouldn't be the ones who own the relationship. It really should be the organization. Right. And PR is a conduit to help build them. So share relationships among everyone. I love that. Well, Martin, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your insights. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you. You too.